policy. So the floor is now open for uh, questions and uh, comments. And uh, I have half a dozen people already, but let me remind you to uh, uh, tap your badge on the microphone and uh, press the silver button to uh, enter the queue. I'll take a five or six uh, in a group and then uh, return to uh, the panel for their uh, replies. Uh, the um, first question from uh, Japan, from Aiko Doden. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Aiko Doden from NHK. My question is to ASEAN Secretary General. You have spoken about the hard security uh, front issues like fighting terrorism or extremism. But what about the human security challenges or the non-traditional security challenges that can turn into hard security challenges? Um, the region is uh, diverse. Um, disparity is quite stark where um, the per capita GDP of the wealthiest is 60 to 70 times as much as that of the poorest. Um, how can you transform the community into a community that uh, cares and shares as it aspires to do? Thank you. And from uh, the UK, Ben Bland. Thank you. And my question is for Bapak Riyamizad Riachudu from Indonesia. Uh, Pak, you spoke of the threat from radicalism in Indonesia, but how concerned are you about the growing social and political influence of extremist preachers in Indonesia, like Habib Rizik? Thank you. Thank you. And uh, from China, uh, Lin Liu. Go ahead. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my question is for uh, the Indonesian Defense Minister and the Philippine uh, Under Secretary of Defense. Uh, both of you mentioned in your speech that uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines uh, are now conducting joint patrol in the Sulu Sea. Uh, and you also mentioned that China now has enhanced the defense cooperation with uh, uh, Indonesia, uh, the Philippines and other ASEAN countries. Uh, so uh, I wonder if you are welcoming the uh, other countries to join in the Sulu Sea Patrol. Uh, and uh, uh, because it is reported that the Philippines want uh, China to send uh, ships to uh, jointly combat piracy in the Sulu Sea. And uh, what do you think China and ASEAN can uh, do to further enhance the defense cooperation uh, be between China and ASEAN countries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and from uh, Malaysia, Prasant Parameswaran. Thanks a lot for the opportunity, John. Um, I have two questions, both for General David. Uh, my first question is, uh, you mentioned that uh, trilateral patrols are, are not just about piracy, but also um, they could be extended to include the South China Sea. And Minister uh, Raikudu also mentioned that a third of the region where the patrols are based does cover the, the South China Sea. I'm wondering, how do you envision uh, these patrols to take place, given the fact that the South China Sea environment is a little bit more complicated relative to the Sulu Sea, given the various claims there? Um, my second question is, um, you mentioned that the U.S.-Philippine alliance is, is a cornerstone um, for the Philippines. Um, and there's already a lot of cooperation that goes on uh, between the U.S. and the Philippines in, in various areas. It's a very mature relationship. I'm wondering if you could tell us uh, what additional opportunities you see for the United States and the Philippines to pursue uh, in their defense relationship, whether it's in terrorism and with respect to the Islamic State or other areas, given the fact that we could potentially see a summit meeting between uh, President Duterte and President Trump later this year. Thank you. Thank you very much. And from the U.S., David Shambo. Uh, yes, thank you, John. Um, two of our speakers uh, mentioned the framework document for the Code of Conduct. And I'd like to ask if there was any consideration given during the negotiations for that framework document to establishing parameters and caps on different aspects of military-related deployments on the islands and the fe land features uh, in the South China Sea for personnel, for anti-aircraft batteries, planes, ships, etc. And uh, if this was discussed during the negotiations, why was it not included in the 
uh, framework document itself, and even though it's not included in the framework document, might it still be included in a code of conduct discussions? I raise this because the issue of militarization, or so-called militarization of the South China Sea is very much on the table, and it would seem to me that this would be an important confidence-building measure. And in that regard, I would just uh, note that for China, there is a precedent here. When China uh, established, along with other countries, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization in the late 1990s, uh, such caps and parameters on deployments, on exercises, on pre-notification of exercises, and so on, were very much part of the founding documents of the SCO. So might that model also be used for the South China Sea? Thank you very much for that, and I think there, uh, uh, there, there, there's a, an upcoming meeting uh, soon uh, uh, in another context on this, but thank you very much for pointing that out, uh, David. Uh, from Russia, Ekaterina Koldunova, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, let me congratulate all the panelists with ASEAN 50th anniversary, and I think that ASEAN is an indispensable organization for the region. And my question, actually two questions, go to uh, all the panelists. Uh, first uh, question is, uh, can uh, the trilateral cooperation between the Philippines, Malaysia, and Indonesia, mentioned here several times, uh, become a prototype for ASEAN military security cooperation in the meaning? I don't mean uh, building a military bloc, uh, uh, but rather, a more enhanced military-to-military -military, uh, cooperation and interoperability uh, uh, building. The second question is that, uh, well, actually, being from Russia, I cannot but ask, uh, do the panelists foresee any new prospects for ASEAN-Russia cooperation in the anti-terrorist sphere, specifically taking into account the recent Duterte, President Duterte, President Putin meeting in, in Russia? Thank you. Good, thank you very much. Well, there's a proliferation of requests for ASEAN plus one meetings, um, and uh, we can add Russia to, to the agenda for the panelists. Could I ask uh, from Malaysia, Jin Kiat Ku, to... Oh, thank you for taking my question. My question is to Philippine Defense Minister, oh, no, Indonesia Defense Minister. Maybe this issue is not under your purview, but could you talk a little bit more on the recent enforcement engagement between Vietnam and Indonesia in the Natuna water? Thank you. Sorry, can you just repeat the last part of that question? Natuna? Okay. Good, I'll return back to uh, the panel then. I might ask first uh, uh, Under Secretary David to uh, address the questions of uh, joint patrols, enhanced defense cooperation with uh, uh, China, how patrols can be conducted in the South China Sea, it being a very contested environment. Further prospects of U.S.-Philippine cooperation and ASEAN-Russia, I think all that went to you. The ASEAN Secretary General also on non-traditional threats and perhaps on these ASEAN plus one arrangements. And then the Indonesian Defense Minister uh, on uh, uh, the patrols. Um, and perhaps you also might, ca uh, uh, might address this question on whether uh, caps on uh, military um, equipment to be put on features and uh, reefs in the South China Sea uh, was discussed in the framework agreement or could be discussed in the, in the final context. Any one of you, in fact, might take up that important question asked by uh, David uh, Shambo. So, Under Secretary David first. Okay, uh, thank you very much, sir. I think the question is about the trilateral patrols in South China Sea. It is not intended for the trilateral patrol in the South China Sea. Uh, it is intended for the Solusi and the Celeve Sea, the common borders of Malaysia, Philippines, and Indonesia. So this is not a patrol in the South China Sea. On the questions on whether other countries could participate uh, in, the, in the multilateral patrols, well, that will be a discussion on, among the three countries Malaysia, Philippines, and Indonesia. But uh, on the Philippine side, uh, we really welcome a multilateral engagement in the contested, uh, on the areas of uh, Kulu, on the areas of Sulu and, and Celibacy. We are not uh, forming a military bloc. We are forming a, a defense cooperations uh, uh, that must be 
understood by everybody that uh, this is a defense cooperation and uh, a cooperation on mutual engagement or mutual cooperation in the, in the uh, Seleucid and in the celibacy. The other problems such as uh, cooperation of the or meeting with the Russian. This will be dis on discussed among the uh, ministers during the meeting in Manila as to whether what's the, what is the arrangement as to the meeting on, uh, with the ADMM plus such like, as, such like Russia. Thank you very much. Well, I guess I got the question right, but uh, in this forum we are discussing peace and security matters. But the work of the arts community is not just about uh, peace and stability or security. In the process of the development of the roadmap towards the uh, arts community 2015, and also in the process of the development of the uh, division 2025, that would uh, guide our work till 2025. We have tried to strike a balance in the work of the three communities, the political security community, economic community, and social cultural community, the three pillars of the community. Non-traditional uh, threats are just cross-cutting, and we have in the vision, as we have had in the uh, roadmap towards the uh, community 2025, comprehensive measures on you know, this, I mean, the, the need to fight non-traditional threat. We, have, we do have the problem of implementation for the fact that uh, although we have achieved a lot of uh, regional agreements, uh, uh, regional commitments, but the, the rate of transposing these commitments and uh, agreement uh, into national strategies, national laws, is uh, still, and uh, for implementation, is still uh, modest. And, and, and that's why in the, 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 the implementation of the, the new vision, we have emphasized the, the importance of uh, uh, evaluation and monitoring. Before, we had only one uh, dedicated division for the uh, monitoring and evaluation of you know, the implementation of the, the measures that was in the economic uh, community uh, department. Now we have that for every uh, department of the ASEAN Secretariat. And the monitoring and evaluation of the work we are doing now, it's not just about compliance, it's about the outcome of implementation of the measures. So that reflect, I mean, the our de determined to ensure that the, the, the vision that our leaders have uh, adopted that, are, that will work, that guide our work in the next 10 years will be effectively implemented. On the question of you know, the uh, framework for the uh, COC, you, uh, uh, this is only a draft and it needs to be endorsed by the ministers uh, I mean, the, at the next uh, coming meeting, but the uh, nucleus of you know the framework is to create a rule-based framework and a set of norms to guide the conduct of you know the parties in the South China Sea. It is to create and to ensure mutual trust, and cooperation, and to and confidence and also to prevent uh, and manage incidents. It is also to create a favorable environment for the peaceful settlement of the dispute and to ensure maritime security and safety of uh, and uh, freedom of navigation and overflights. And the, 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 term, uh, the framework of the COC is also to ensure a commitment to the UN Charter, the United Nations uh, Convention on Law of the Sea, and also the DAC, the Treaty of Empty Corruption in South Asia, that now we have 
up to 25 non-ASEAN contracting parties. And as I said, this is only draft and need to be endorsed by the minister in next coming meeting. Could I just press you on the point as to what you think uh, the possibilities are to discuss uh, caps on uh, placing of military equipment on the islands or features in the South China Sea? Well, I mentioned the militarization of, you know, the, uh, the, 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 in the South China Sea, especially, you know, in the uh, features and in the islands that have been uh, occupied, illegally occupied, which go counter to the uh, spirit of Article 5 of the Declaration on the Conduct of Party South China Sea has been the reason, I mean, of tension and uh, which led to the, uh, the danger of uh, conflict, even between powers. So, as I said, the, the, the framework that the uh, ASEAN countries and China have concluded for the COC uh, just now is a draft. It needs to be endorsed by the ministers at the next coming meeting, the nucleus of you know, the, uh, uh, the, the, the framework uh, that I just uh, mentioned. Thanks very much. Under Secretary David wanted to add a few uh, points on uh, US-Philippine defense uh, relationship and also on patrols in the South China Sea. So I'll give him that opportunity before going to Minister Riakudo. We, we have just concluded Bali Katan uh, 2017, which is a US and Philippines uh, exercises, ex military exercise. On the way forward to US relations, our defense and military planners are constantly exploring ways on how to move the alliance forward through established processes, such as the bilateral defense dialogue, mutual defense and security engagement board. As to the uh, pat joint patrols in South China Sea, we do not have a joint patrols. U.S. flies in the area in accordance with the freedom of navigation, and the Philippines does legitimate and regular patrol over its territorial and jurisdictional waters. Okay, uh, thank you. Minister, we are good. Uh, thank you so much for all the questions. I'll try to answer. The first one related to the radicalism in Indonesia. Uh, it, be, uh, it is related to Habib Rizik. I believe it is not a threat for us. What, what uh, becoming the more concern is it is always stated that it is a threat, but it is, it is, in fact, it is not. It is about law, rule of law. So everyone who is who followed the law, uh, even it, in Indonesia or in the they, they followed the law in other country, it has to be resolved through the law to respect the law. Uh, we don't consider this as the radicals, but for the ISIS or DICE, uh, we call it a radical. I believe that uh, our police uh, law enforcement is uh, still do there. And uh, what have been said by the speakers, our enemy that we face is our common enemy. Terrorists is not. It is like our common enemy, especially in ASEAN at the moment. Uh, we don't have any differences. After 50 years, we are we have the solidarity and our cooperation is more st strong. And 
I believe that uh, this can become the role model for like other country like the in the Middle East. So the framework of the cooperation of ASEAN, the aim of uh, cooperation of ASEAN is to secure the region. If the region, we there are many issues, there must be more framework of cooperation. There are three, three kind of uh, issues. The first one is the issue of the Sulu waters and the issue of the Malacca Strait and the, the in, in Thailand. So that's why we need, uh, it is imperative for us to cooperate to address this issue. And especially the situation in the Philippines growing and escalate. Last year, we plan to to resolve the piracy, piracy problem in and secondly, uh, we indicate there is the returning of the foreign fighters to this area. On they plan to make the Philippines, the southern Philippines, as the basis or of ISIS, and it proven to be true. It is based on our assessment last year. So the cooperation is about the sec security in the, in this region. So we already start with the joint patrol on the sea. Last, last time, many vessels has been take, held captive by the pirates. In the future, we are going to hold like a cooperation for the ground forces and air forces. And the deployment has been planned and will be launched uh, on the 19th of this month. And the next one, if the involvement, the involvement of other country, like the Singapore or Th Thailand, if the situation escalates and extend to other waters, we would like, we like to request other country to join. And it is the responsibility of us in this region. And the next one, related to the uh, Uh, the involvement of other parties to join the uh, waters arrangement. Like the Philippines, they fight these, the radical groups in, in Marawi. So we have to prevent and to protect our border. We can, we can close our border for this, to make sure these militants, they don't move to the other area. So, and it has been regulated in our rule of engagement and standing operating procedure and related to the involvement of uh, related to the two third of the South China Sea can be secured. Uh, related to the South China Sea, uh, uh, starting from the Vietnam, it is also they have the territory of South China Sea, Cambodia, Thailand, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia. If every nation conduct patrols in this area, in the, the zone economy, zone economy, so at least half of the South China Sea can be secured. So I think the importance of this, but if everyone conduct their own patrols in this area. So at least half of the South China Sea has been contained. That's actually what I mean. Yeah. Uh, uh, related to the deployment of, uh, related to the question, we are the conceptualizing the draft of engagement and the three of us, the three different ministers of Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia, we are going to meet uh, in, the, uh, in September also, then we'll discuss many issues. And ASEAN is not a military block. It is like a defense cooperation as mentioned by uh, Andres Kateri David. What, ha what the issue in ASEAN related to the we, if there's any challenges and issues in ASEAN, then we have to uh, find commonalities uh, to address this issue. Terkait dengan uh, our engagement with Vietnam, we have a close relation with Vietnam. 
are related to illegal fishing, yeah, we can resolve this peacefully. I don't think it is an issue. Hmm. And the next one is. We, we also uh, try to negotiate with China to open communication. Not uh, if they are they are not open for communication and transparency, it is very important. So we invite China to conduct like joint patrols with Indonesia and the ASEAN, and uh, China tends to agree with the approval to conduct like joint patrol. It is not like a, it is, it is like peace patrol. It is very important to, uh, to underline that uh, the, it is conducted for joint uh, peace patrol. Uh, I think that's uh, my answer. Thank you. More people on my list. Uh, they've appeared uh, uh, in alphabetical order by first names: uh, Sylvia Yazid and Sylvie Kaufman. But I'll ask Sylvia Yazid uh, first from Indonesia, please. Thank you, Dr. Chipman. I don't have a question actually because it has been asked by others um, just now. But I would like to take this opportunity to send my hearts and concerns to the people of London. Um, fellow uh, participants from UK, uh, our deepest condolences for what happened. Um, and um, I talked on the first day with a fellow participant from UK and Indonesia has been considered as a, a strategic partner for this issue of uh, terrorism. So I hope, uh, Ria Mizat, that we can continue to be one of the um, strategic partner in combating terrorism. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much uh, for those remarks, and indeed, uh, all of our hearts go out to the families. There were six deaths and uh, three suspects uh, shot and uh, a number of uh, further casualties uh, in hospital, so thank you for that. Sylvie Kaufmann from France. Uh, yes, this is a question about the terrorist threat precisely uh, to um, the Indonesian Defense Minister and to Under Secretary David. Um, you've talked about the uh, trilateral cooperation among uh, governments, and could you um, shed some light on the level of coordination between the extremist groups uh, in, in your countries, and um, particularly in the um, operation in Marawi? Um, what, is, uh, um, what are the different uh, citizenships of the foreign fighters we, who have been... Uh, arrested or killed, and also uh, do you see a level of coordination with foreign fighters in the Middle East or in, in Europe um, who, are, uh, who have pledged allegiance to ISIS? Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'll just give Under Secretary um, uh, David and, uh, and uh, Pak Riamazar a chance to answer those questions on cooperation between groups and also on the nationality of foreign fighters to the extent you've been able to identify them? On the, first I'll talk on the foreign fighters. It is, uh, our intelligence estimate that there are about 40 foreigners uh, that fought in that uh, Marawi incident. But already eight uh, foreign fighters identified as two Malaysian, two Saudi, or three Malaysian, and Indonesians were killed uh, during the uh, military operations. Uh, so we have a, a uh, foreigners or different nationalities uh, operating together with the Mauti in the area. Uh, they have a, a back channels corridor in, the, in our country, uh, probably in the area of Sulusi and Celibacy that they can proceed to Mindanao and link with the uh, terrorist uh, units in the, in, in the area. That's why they were able to, to master their uh, operations in the, in the area of Marawi. So as far as our cooperations, uh, our secretary has been very, Secretary Lorenzana, has been coordinating very closely, and our military, pers our military, particularly our Navy and as well as our Air Force, for the joint uh, activities in the area, 
this is not just a, uh, this is what I mean is a, a joint military operations uh, wherein they have a joint uh, operation centers in the op operational and uh, grounds. We have a uh, representatives in our uh, operation centers. So this is a very close uh, coordinate, uh, coordinations among our uh, operating uh, units in the, in the trilateral uh, boundaries of, the, of Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines. Thank you. Uh, the first one uh, related to the <coughs> the our strategy to fight this foreign fighter. Uh, it is started with uh, intelligence cooperation. Last night, I make a coordination with the Singapore intelligence. They show me there is some indication of Indonesian passport nationality. Uh, it is completed with their address in Indonesia. Uh, starting from that point, we will to investigate based on this address what is their networks. But it needs time. It need, uh, hopefully, uh, in the short time, we can disclose this network. And it's very complete. So this is the aim of cooperation among nations. Uh, the next one. how we can tackle these uh, foreign fighters. We have to be comprehensive. And it is not necessarily we take precaution when they are written. They, they must have another plan. So we have to find the, the ways, the, the compelling ways. But we have to exercise caution. They are the killing machine. So. Their aim is to kill other people. So that's why it is our resp responsibility that we have to have the common understanding, then we have to solve this. We have to have find the same consensus, how, how we fight and common proceeding, how to fight these foreign fighters. And the next one, I've been advised last night that around 1,200 uh, 1, ISIS in the Philippines around 40 from Indonesia. This information, it is like a early state of information. I will elaborate this information, then I will inform to our counterpart. And uh, our counterpart uh, and, uh, in ASEAN. Uh, if we can identify them, when we know their passport, that we can identify uh, this person. Okay, thank you so much. You want to say something more? Uh, our government, in addressing, in addressing the terrorism and extremism in the Philippines, President Duterte has a economic, political, and social package to the people. So He's there is a talk now with the Moro National Liberation Front and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front in order to have a peace among these, peop among these uh, two rebel groups. This is very important because most of the elements of the Maute and ISIS come from the area. So we need to uh, remove the, uh, the sympathy of the people to this uh, I, uh, ICs and ext extremists, ex extremists in the area. And also on the political side, the president is now considering a federal system of government in the Philippines that would allow autonomy in the region. We believe that uh, these very important uh, steps of government, one is really toward the peace talks as well as a political solutions in the area. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. Well, Under Secretary David, please uh, give uh, the best wishes of the Shangula Dialogue community to uh, Secretary Lauren Zana and indeed to the armed forces of the Philippines that have had a, a difficult time in the last few days. Our best wishes uh, go to them. Uh, and let me thank you, Under Secretary David, Secretary uh, General of uh, uh, ASEAN, and uh, the Minister of Defense of Indonesia for your presentations today. Thank you very much indeed. We now move to a coffee break and we reconvene at 11.30. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.